in preparing for this message, sometimes in preparing for a message, I get just kind of a feeling for the goal, um, the purpose, what, what we're going to see from this. And the purpose and the goal today is just that we would worship Jesus. Just that we would worship Jesus. So in order to do that, we're going to look at him. You know, this is the Christmas season. It's the holiday season. And we can get so busy. And our schedules and our to-do lists can be so full that we can forget what we're celebrating. What is truly the reason for the season? I think our picture of Christmas and the things that we actually manifest and display during the season, they're so different from the beginning of it, from its origin, from what it's really, really meant to be. And so I just want to remind you this morning of what that is. And let's bring our hearts back and settle it and focus it this morning just to worship God. Jesus because he is the reason for the season we're going to take the time and make the effort for a little while to acknowledge him and I want to open up in the word this morning um, the, the thought that you read in Matthew 1 23 you don't have to turn here but it says um, well, verse 22, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. The title of the message this morning is God with us. He's with us. Jesus was the perfect manifestation of God with us. I want to go to Luke 2. Luke chapter 2. And we're going to look at just a couple of different pictures that we see in the Christmas story. The Christmas account. Whatever you want to call it. Luke chapter 2 verse 8. It says, and, and my, I'm reading out of the, um, I think it's the English Standard Version, so it reads a little bit differently than what we're used to. It says, and in the same region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. I want you to get the picture of this scene. Very, very simple seen things going on that are very simple and very humble and so we start reading here when there were shepherds keeping watch over their sheep at night it says and an angel of the lord appeared to them and the glory of the lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear so, starts out simply, shepherds in the field, and all of a sudden, an angel shows up on the scene. And the glory of the Lord is shining around them. So, all of a sudden, it's bright. I'm sure as bright as day. And don't you think you would be a little bit afraid? <laughs> this is not something they've ever experienced before. And the angel said to them, fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. This angel is showing up out in the middle of the pasture at night to a group of shepherds. Every day, common Joe people. An angel just appears to them and he says, okay, well, first of all, don't be afraid. I'm bringing you good news. That will be for all people. Just imagine this angel showed up to tell them the good news that's for all people. 
For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. Here is simple again. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. So they've just told them, I'm bringing you great news. That's going to be for everyone. And here's your sign. It's a baby. (laughs) wrapped up laying in a feed trough (laughs) and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and we we can't even I don't think we can even imagine what this was like this was a big deal very simple situation but it suddenly becomes a big deal This was the most important thing that had happened since the creation of man. Mm -hmm. The most important thing. And angels are showing up to a group of shepherds to tell them about it. (laughs) Simple, yet the biggest thing that ever was. And a multitude of heavenly hosts shows up. Can you imagine being a simple shepherd in the field at night watching your sheep and a multitude, I don't know how many that means, but it's a lot, of heavenly hosts shows up. Does it say, are they in the sky or are they standing on the ground? It doesn't say. So imagine what you will. Suddenly, there was with the one angel that had already told them this, suddenly there was with them a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace. I think it usually says goodwill toward men. My version says, and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? Me? <laughs> Me? God sent an angel and then multitudes of the heavenly host. As I was out in the field one night watching my sheep, he sent them to me. Wow. Wow. And he's, they're saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. The only indication they ever had of God being pleased with them was when he accepted their sacrifices. When they brought the sacrifice to the temple and they weren't destroyed. You know, when the high priest went in And the bell was still ringing because he wasn't killed. Mm -hmm. Because the sacrifices were accepted. This is a foreign idea, I think. And when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went and they found them just as the angels had said. Wow. Seemingly very small beginnings, right? Yet, this was a big deal. This was a big deal. God with us. You get the picture? (laughs) God with us. So turning back to Luke chapter 1, in verse 30. I'm going to look at another spot here. Seemingly small beginnings. Here we have Mary. Young Mary. Betrothed to Joseph. She's going to get married. Not married yet. A young, young girl. And an angel shows up to her. It says, and the angel said to her, let's see, do not be afraid, Mary, For you have found favor with God. Once again, 
she's going about her business the angel shows up and she gets afraid as i'm sure we all would and this angel is telling her here you found favor with god once again he's saying i'm i'm pleased this is a good thing that i'm showing up here and behold you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you shall call his name jesus he will be great and will be called the son of the most high and the lord god will give to him the throne of his father david and he will reign remember this is talking about a kid she's gonna have right he will reign over the house of jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end and what did mary say mary said to the angel how will this be since i'm a virgin never been with a man how's this going to be and the angel said to her the holy spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you therefore the child to be born will be called holy the son of god and behold your relative elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son and this is the sixth month with her who is called barren for nothing will be impossible with god and Mary said, Behold, I'm the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed her. I find it kind of humorous in Mary's response here. Think about what this angel just told her. You're going to conceive and you're going to bear a son. And he said he will be great and will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. I think that part did not even register. She <laughs> was not past the thought of, how am I going to have a kid? <laughs> That's not possible. <laughs> but think of the magnitude of what he's telling her. Not only... You're going to have a kid, and you haven't been with anybody, but he's going to be the king, and his kingdom's going to reign forever. That di I don't think it, it didn't even register what he's saying here. <laughs> Not you got to get over the first impossibility to get the second impossibility, right? <laughs> but God with us said he will be called Emmanuel which means God with us okay so the miracle then of the virgin birth because this in Matthew 1 said let me get how it said it the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel. So the miracle of the virgin birth was the first indication of God with us, right? That, that, that can't happen. <laughs> it just can't. Never has in all of existence. It's impossible. With God, nothing shall be impossible. With God. With God. God with us. Right. God with us. Right. Yeah. Yes. His presence makes the impossible possible. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Jesus was proof of the presence of the divine in our midst. One of my favorite scriptures first john 4 9 says in this the love of god was made manifest among us that god sent his only son into the world that we might live through him god manifested or showed his love among us in that he sent his son jesus was proof of God's love to us. Jesus was God proving to us his love and our value to him. 
And, you know, just in my imagination, I see God looking upon mankind in history. And I don't, I don't see him looking upon us and thinking, man, what a mess. They need saving. I see him looking upon us and thinking, I want to prove my intentions to them. I want to prove myself to them. Just that they would believe me. Because this was the problem from the beginning, wasn't it? With Eve. Eve became convinced of a lie. And that caused her to separate herself from the truth. That was the problem. So to solve the problem, we have to have a proof. Yeah. Jesus is God proving himself to us. You know, we often have the idea that sin caused God's presence to leave them. That he couldn't look upon them anymore because of what they did. But that's simply not true. We see his presence all over the Old Testament, right? He didn't leave the scene. We just couldn't see it correctly. Not only did he not leave his creation, he chose to become a part of his creation to show his love and his intentions toward us. The angels declared it. They said, on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. That's what they're talking about. This is an act, goodwill towards men. This is an act because he wants to show he's pleased, not with what we did, with us. He created us. He desires to have a relationship with us. That's what Jesus was doing. He was showing God's intentions toward us, that he loves us, that he wants us in his life. Jesus was and is God with us. And we still celebrate it today. You know, these humble things that we talked about, the virgin birth, the trip to Bethlehem. No place for Joseph and Mary in the inn. Shepherds keeping watch over their field, cl- flocks in the fields. And I'm reminded of the Christmas carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Yet, God with us tonight. Yeah. Let us remember and worship the Savior King who came and dwelt among us to live and to die for you and for me. Thank you, Jesus. How's the love of a mom made known to her children? You know, you might hear kids kids say, you know, we knew mom loved us. We knew mom loved us. How? It's not because of what she said. It's because of what she did. Isn't it? We knew mom loved us because she was there. She was there no matter what. You know, she loved us because she made things better. She sacrificed. How many kids have said that? 
the sacrifice my mom has made. I know she loves me. God showed the same thing. The sacrifice that he made. Yeah. The most important thing we can know about our father today. Emmanuel. God with us. Because he loves us. He is with us. In John, we, we read that Jesus was the word made flesh. That the word word. It's, that can be kind of confusing if you really don't know, kind of have an idea of what he's talking about. Jesus was the word made flesh. What does that mean? Well, that word word is from logos, which is where we get our word logic. And the definition that I found for it is a statement, a sentence, or argument used to convince or persuade the targeted audience by employing reason or logic. Jesus was the statement or argument used to convince or persuade us of what God had to say. The logic was spelled out in God himself becoming flesh. What does that mean, that he became flesh? Well, he became human. He became soft. He became vulnerable. That's what it means that he became flesh. The son who was with the father from the beginning stepped out of his divinity and put on flesh. He literally stepped away from his condition. I mean, he was divinity. He was God. So we have even a hard time imagining what that would be like. But whatever it was, he created created the world. So the power that he resided in, no problem he couldn't solve. that he didn't have an answer for. I I can't imagine him physically hurting. He stepped out of that place and he put on flesh. And Jesus' life began at conception. Jesus' life began in a mother's womb. Tiny, tiniest little bit of life is where Jesus began. And he grew in his mother's womb. And he was born as a baby, just like we all were. He was born in the humblest of situations can you imagine moms can you imagine making a trip to another town away from home because the government is requiring it of you and it's time for your baby to be born not only that but the situation is already not great because she became pregnant before her and joseph were married and their society was nothing like our society. So I I can't imagine, I can't imagine what Mary went through, what this supposedly meant for Jesus' life. Yeah. But he was born, just like all of us, a breathing, crying baby who had dirty diapers, (laughs) had to be fed, just like all of us. 
And then he was a little boy running around, scraped knees, probably. Could have been mischievous, I don't know. And then he was a young man. <laughs> and he had parents, <laughs> just like all of us. And then he was a grown man. And he had the same complexities that we do in our families, in our work, in our friends. He had friends. He lost friends. He went through all of these things of life. He had tension with his family. <laughs> he was betrayed. The God of creation put this on. <laughs> wow. He faced death. And he wasn't looking forward to it <laughs> because he prayed, Father, if it can be done any other way, let it pass. <laughs> His prayer wasn't answered, was it? <laughs> Have we experienced these things? Just like Jesus. But to know God takes Jesus. Without Jesus, God's character is not displayed on the earth. <laughs> the Word made flesh, God with us. In Jesus, God placed himself inside the human experience. In Jesus, he was now vulnerable. God, thank you. I, just, I worship you, Jesus. I thank you and I worship you for the might of who you are. That in your humility, the mighty power of God was displayed. And that is something that only comes from God. We, we can't originate that in our human flesh thank you jesus he experienced things that we experience which he never could have being solely divine had he stayed in heaven or what however you want to imagine it had he stayed there he never could have experienced the things that we do and so this opens up so much more in our relationship with him. That never would have been had Jesus not come and been us. <laughs> Hebrews 2, 16 through 18 says, For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. That's us. Therefore, he had to be made like his brothers in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. He is God with us. He's with us. Not just physically present, but it's like he's saying, I'm with you. I'm with you. Right there. All the way. He took it all the way. And he's still all the way with us. I heard this this explained when I was researching this. When, when God made a physical covenant with Abram, he was saying, he was telling Abram, you know, your seed will be many and, you know, all the things that he promised him. I'm giving you this land. And Abram was questioning, how am I going to know? How am I supposed to know? Well, God said, bring me some animals. He was going to make a covenant. 
this was something that they knew. We don't, we don't do this today. Um, so he told Abram to bring him these animals. And Abram prepared the animals by cutting them in half. He took all the animals he brought him, except the birds, and he cut them in half. And he laid one side of the animal on one side and the other side of the animal on the other side. So there was a path down the middle of these animal parts. And the presence of God walked through the middle of that to make that covenant. God's presence came and walked through the middle. That's a visual representation of God with us, right? Jesus was the fulfillment of that covenant. Jesus became the sacrifice. And his presence is forever with us. Now, that was just a picture of things to come. And now, not only that, but the Holy Spirit is God in us. Jesus is God with us. Now the Holy Spirit is God in us. Jesus made the way. He said, it's better that I go away because I'm sending another helper. And he does so much more in us than could ever have been before that. Than he could ever do among us. He does so much more in us than he could ever do among us. And I heard it put this way. The ideal has smashed a hole in the dividing wall. God is the ideal. Jesus is the ideal. And he has smashed a hole in the dividing wall that's between us. And he has come into reality and is now transforming us into his likeness. The likeness of the ideal. So I would say to you, if you're not seeing that transformation in your life, then you need to interact with this reality some more. The more you're aware of it, the more you're going to be transformed. Father, remind them of your presence inside. If you believe that Jesus came as Emmanuel, God with us, I want you to raise your hand. You believe that Jesus is God with us, that he came as Emmanuel, yes. then you can be assured that the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Amen. You can be assured of that night and day, 365 days a year, right. no matter what, no matter what. From the humblest of beginnings, he's there. He is with us. And the more you become aware of him, the more it will change and equip you. Let me read what Jesus said of himself to you. I'm going to go there. You don't need to. So, Jesus liked this scripture, I believe. It says when he went into the temple and he got up to read, he found this in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 61. I'm not going to read all of it, but it says, this is what he said. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. This is the truth, the reality of who lives inside of you. So not only was it true of him when he spoke it, it was true when Isaiah wrote it, but it's true inside you today. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, 
Thank you, Jesus. To grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes. Ashes was a sign of mourning. But now he gives us a beautiful headdress. He bore the crown of thorns so we could bear this beautiful headdress with the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness. An oak tree is strong, steadfast, and secure. The planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. The devastations that have been in your life, the devastations that have been in your family, for generations that just get passed down from one person to the next. He restores them. He builds them back up in our lives. And the things that were ruined cities in our life, it's no longer a thriving, bustling city. You want that in your life? Let's worship Jesus. Amen. Everybody stand.